Good morning to you. This is Ann White, host of The Chicken Show, and I will be bringing you a delightful in-coop chat with Melissa Cawhey. Uh We had some technical difficulties on Google Hangout, so we recorded on a different uh, modality, and that's what you're going to see today. So we are in the coop with Melissa of Tilly's Nest, and the chickens are just having a clucking good time. I think they all wanted to be interviewed. So you will get to meet her chickens, and just a delightful day in Tilly's Nest. So sit back, grab your cup of cup of, cup of coffee, cup of tea, cup of lemon water, I don't care. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy. It's all good. And we are recording. This is Ann White, host of The Chicken Show, coming to you on a different uh, technical program because we can do anything. We couldn't get into Google, but I'm here with Melissa Cawhey. And I am in the comfort of my office, and she is in the comfort of a chicken coop. Good morning, Melissa. How are you? Good morning, Anne. Thank you so much for having me on the chicken show. We're excited to be here. Uh, I am too. And why don't you just, before we even get into who you are and why we're talking to Melissa, but this is a clue, um, tell us where you are and what's going on around you. Sure. Um, well, right now it's 25 degrees out. <laughs> little chilly. We're hoping for spring to come and get the message of Friday's arrival. Um, but I'm sitting here with my flock of girls, 12 total. Um, let's see. I can introduce you to some. This, this. can you see her eating out of my hand? This is oyster cracker. We call her Miss Piggy. <laughs> and this here is, um, let's see. Come on, Tilly. Tilly's coming on over. Ah. Tilly's nest, the, the original probably, right? Yes, Tilly's our head hen. Um, this here is, um, this is Story. I have two bantam buframas, so it's hard to tell sometimes which is which. Um, she's one of our new ones. I named her after the book publisher, Story, because don't chickens always have stories to tell us as well? You bet. <laughs> and so we're here. They're looking for lots of goodies. Bribery gets chickens everywhere, as you know. <laughs> gets you everywhere, chickens. <laughs> I know. My little ghost owl, the little barred rock, when she sees me, she comes running, and I think, oh, she loves me. But no, she really wants to know. Do you have the mealworms? <laughs> but I like to pretend. <laughs> exactly. exactly. We've got little silkies in here. We've got Buffington's. We've got Easter eggers. It looks Looks like Miss Lucy our is trying to find you, Anne. <laughs> she uh, hears you, and she's over in the neck of the woods. <laughs> uh, you know, that's a beautiful coop you have. I, I love your coop. Um, and they can go out. I see the door is open. Yes, it's it's so, um, well, the whole run is surrounded with um, thick plastic right now because, unfortunately, we still have two feet of snow on the ground. Gosh, okay. So we had a lot more. There were five-foot drifts up on the sides of the run, so thank goodness I ended up, you know, covering the run with the plastic when I did because that allows the girls so much more space to have, um, you know, a little fun outside and enjoy scratching and being protected from some of the harsh elements that we've had up in the Northeast. So we're on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And yeah, I'm just smiling because behind you there's a whole chicken show going on. <laughs> oh yeah, they, these are the girls and now they've discovered the uh, the secret container of scratch. Uh, um, they, they've, they're enjoying a pear as well, but you know, they are... Uh, they are funny. Well, let me tell our watchers who you are. Um, Melissa Cahey, she's a backyard chicken keeper, a beekeeper, a gardener, an author of an award-winning blog called Tilly's Nest, and that's where I came across um, Melissa. She also writes for HGTV Gardens, Community Chickens, Grip Magazine, and Country Life. So um, you are just a treasure trove, but this is one of the things I'm excited about. It's called oh. a guide to chickens, keeping chickens. Me too. <laughs> and, you know, my son is 30, 
So I, I can't claim that I have any kids at home, but I'm a relatively new chicken keeper. I'm just coming across my year, but it's amazing how experienced you can get having chickens because you yes. can make But I have to say, this book is a godsend to me, even without kids. So if you don't have kids, don't let uh -oh. the kids guide um, dis discourage you from getting this book. There is so much wonderful information, and of all the books I've written, Red, I didn't know some of the things that are in here. Now, granted, oh. I'm probably not going to sit down and make a little um, chicken swing first. Um, probably I won't be doing that. But <laughs> the gardens, the, the coops, so many wonderful things. So, if you don't have kids, get it for yourself. But truly, truly, it's written to introduce children to chickens. So, what a great idea. How do you oh, thank you. Well, oh, you, you know... I believe kids are a lot smarter than we give them credit for, and both of my kids went to Montessori um, preschools. Uh -huh. For me, you give kids, you know, the opportunities to learn and have responsibility and things of that nature, and I think it really helps a lot. And in this generation today, where everybody is so plugged in, you know, the chickens for us as a family have really been since my kids have been quite little so up oh, here comes cuddles here she she wants to say hello uh -huh. oh. and show us her butt okay cuddles turn around yeah. let's see your face there's your oh your neck and your tail okay. <laughs> she, she's she's a uh, such a love she's an easter egger uh -huh. um, but you know to get kids these days to unplug when we started with the chickens my kids were three and six Mm -hmm. um, so they were a great way to introduce, you know, responsibility, some chores, uh, learning life lessons, learning where food comes from. And, oh, here comes my lovey girl. Can you see her? This is Oyster Cracker. She, she Bob does, Washington. Yeah, she does this. She she can't get enough. <laughs> and we'll we'll do this for sometimes a half hour every day. And um, you know, I guess she has her fill. Um, but, you know, I wrote the book really to give kids a lot of chances to get out and explore and enjoy chickens as pets, really, to be able to um, connect and have friendships and, um, you know, just do crafting recipes, make them treats, give them a birthday cake. Um, all sorts of things that we have done over the past five years that have really made a difference in my family's life. And the goal was to share that as well with people. Oh, and I, I just really, I haven't written my review yet. Um, I probably need 10 stars to do the review on it because it is a way of um, really showing kids and maybe people experience with chickens probably already know this, but how to connect with chickens in a relationship, because it's more than throwing out the feed and picking up the poop. Right. Um, it's making the friendships, bringing the treats, making the little toys for them. Um, because chickens are curious, they're lovable, as you can see. so it's really teaching children how to have a, a loving, good relationship. Right, and a respect for animals, a respect for, um, oh boy, is somebody not getting along? Goodness gracious. Um, a respect for animals, a respect for their surroundings, um, and really to understand that, you know, the, the, the main thing is that you have to show animals compassion and caring. And if you do reward and treat your, your chickens and keep them healthy and nurture them, then they're going to nurture you with love and eggs and their own little friendships. Yeah. And how old are your children now? Are they still home? So my um, children are now older. Uh, my son is 11 and a half, and my daughter just turned 8. Are they still getting involved with the hens? I'm sorry? Are they still getting involved with the chickens? I didn't get that. Did poor, poor Lucy so loud. <laughs> try one more time. Oh, I'll try to get between the clucking. Yes. Um, are your kids still involved with the hens? Oh, yes, very much so. Um, they, 
Uh, this winter's been really harsh, so I've been doing a lot of the early morning things, um, especially during the cold in the school year and when it's still dark out. Uh, I try and let the girls out every morning at 6, and then they go in at night. Um, so the kids uh, do, you know, the feeding, the watering. I, I handle a lot of the poops. <laughs> but the kids are much more active in the spring, and especially during the summer when they're off from school. Then they kind of take over the majority of chores um, that we do with the chickens. But I can tell you that after school, they've asked me now to get their chairs out so they can come and sit with the flock. It's warm enough. And they'll come, and Madeline, my daughter, will read you know, books to the girls, and they'll come in and collect the eggs and, and spend time with them. And uh, it's just such a magical thing. And sometimes, even when kids have issues or problems at school, all it takes is a few minutes to sit with 12 of their best feathered friends to melt the day away. And for me, it's important. Yeah. You know, it's almost too bad that some schools couldn't have a, a chicken coop to teach yes. the same responsibility and also um, the healing of sitting with a chicken or reading to a chicken or hugging a chicken. Right. That would be a good project right. for some schools. I love that. Right. Um, one of the chapters in the book that is going to be beneficial to me is I know that the chickens love herbs, so you've showed us some of the herbs we can plant that are yeah. healthy for chickens. So, if, yeah, spring is coming here in Wisconsin. I oh, have a chapter <laughs> to get that chicken herb area going. Uh -huh. And I also want to say the pictures are so beautiful. And when we did mm -hmm. the promo for the show, I had my hand Roselle in. And when we got yes. the chicken feed, she was trying to eat it out of the book because it looked like <laughs> chicken feed. <laughs> I found that such a hoot. You know, it was really important for me to show the kids exactly what things look like because, as you know, some children are visual learners as well as kids that will read. So I wanted to include a lot of photos of, you know, real herbs, real feed, real scratch, what the oyster shells look like when they're crushed, what the grit looks like. And I was just thrilled with the photography in this book. And I'm so grateful that Story Publishing was able to connect us with um, the photographer that had the same visions and same thoughts and really had a style similar to my own on Tilly's Nest. Yeah, I, I hope this book goes for it. It's just, I mean, I can't rave enough, but even with the grit and showing the different grits, which helped me because, again, I only knew one kind of grit because I knew. But I love the picture of the little girl um, using her rowing pin to make the eggs into another form of calcium. So it just yes. shows another way to get kids or adults involved in making treats for their hands. Yes, yes. I just had to intervene. My little dolly, one of my oldest silkies, is not doing well. And so I've, I've contemplated. I had to give her a little um, a bath. Last week, I brought her in the house and tried to clean her up a bit. Um, but, you know, I thought about bringing her in the house to kind of stay with us inside a little dog crate. But, you know, she she wants to be with her family. Yeah. So, don't knock that down, Miss Lucy. Yes. You're all wet. Your face is all wet from the water. Yeah. Your little muffs are wet. <laughs> Yeah, you telling them about Dolly, your friend? Huh? You, tell them, you telling them all about her? Yeah. So oh. poor Do yeah, poor Dolly. She's not getting around too much. But you know what? She'd rather be with her family. Yeah. And so um, sometimes they pick on her a little bit because uh, she's she shows signs of weakness. But um, she's all right. She's in my lap now. So I try to try to give her snuggles, but it's been that's been really hard for me because um, she is just such a love. I don't know if you can see her. We can, yeah. Aww. She's precious. Do you have a rooster too, or no roosters? No roosters right now. Um, we've had them in the past. Um, I have a rule that the roosters have to be nice, um, and if they aren't nice, um, then certainly. I don't keep them around for the safety, especially when the kids were, were younger. We haven't had a rooster in about five years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think roosters are fantastic. I think they're great um, for some families, especially if you can find a nice one. But um, a lot of it just comes from confusion. Um, 
you know, from the rooster, not really understanding where little kids are, you know, yeah. what kids are trying to do to their hens. And right. So I definitely think that um, that's important, you know, for you to make sure that you have a nice rooster if you do choose to have one. Um, because they can do some damage. They really can. Um, but, you know, I mean, yeah, on the other hand, they're really great. They, um, they are so chivalrous, chivalrous, and they are romantics at heart. They um, love to call their girls over to found bits and food items and things like that. And, you know, they're great protectors. Um, so they definitely have some benefits. Um, yeah, I know I saw a sad post where there was an attack of something and the rooster got all of his girls back in the coop and he didn't make it. But I thought how brave he was to get it protect everybody. So yes, um, they are quite, quite the guy. Um, <laughs> about Tilly's Nest because that's where I first got you on the radar. I was a fan of Tilly's Nest. Oh, thank I you. I hesitated to get in the books. I don't have kids. But, uh, so how did Tilly's Nest get started and, and what's your mission with Tilly's Nest? Sure. Well, you know, when we first, when I thought, first thought about getting some backyard chickens, I really wasn't quite sure what I was getting myself into. I knew that I enjoyed gardening and I knew that I had kids that had asked for a pet dog, but no one was sleeping through the night at that point. <laughs> and I said, you know, let's try some chickens because they're a little bit easier than a, than a newborn puppy. So um, we ended up getting uh, some chickens after visiting a friend who kept chickens. And she said, worst, what's the worst that will happen? You'll just give me your chickens if it doesn't work out. So that's exactly what we ended up doing. We ended up getting the chickens. And once we got to know them, and all the girls ended up having names. Boy, they're chatterboxes, aren't they? I know. There's one in the back and one in front of you all just having a uh, clucking good time. I know. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to fly on me. I know. I know. You're so silly. What are you doing? Don't go by the phone. Oh, no, no. Um, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so, your attention over there. Who's that trying to get your attention? This is um, Puddle's uh, sister, Fluffy. <laughs> Another Easter egg. -er. She has to lay an egg. I think that's what this is all about. And this is maybe disturbing her serenity for laying her egg or something. Yeah. She wants to get in that box behind me um, because that's the favorite. Um, but so once everybody had names and they had grown up a little bit, so to speak, I realized that they had their own personalities. And... What I realized was that I want to capture this for my kids. I wanted to start journaling and making memories for them so that years later, when they didn't remember these earliest things, that I could have those for them. So that's where it started. And then quite a few years ago when we started this, when we had issues in the flock, the only type of information that was available to us was for commercial poultry keepers. And that was a huge concern for me. And with my background in medicine, I thought, you know, I'm going to do some research. And when I do research it, I'm going to compile it, not only for myself, but for others. Because that was so important for me to be able to have a place where it was tucked away so that if I needed it in the Future, I could easily be able to find it. And then, um, of course, people started asking about my gardening adventures and the beekeeping and other things. And when I found out that people had these interests and wanted to learn more and uh, wanted to get to see more about Tilly's Nest and what we were doing here at the house, then we, you can't go on the phone. You can't. I know. Are you done? Okay. So... <laughs> When people started, you know, asking more, I gave them more. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's it's a delightful, uh, inspiring talk. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. <laughs> I was going to say more. inspiring because 
when you have chickens, it brings you outside. When you're outside, you feel like gardening, and yet there's still that balance between gardening and chickens because chickens could eat your garden as fast as you could plant it. Exactly, exactly. Actually, when we designed this garden, we uh, purposefully made sure that we put in a chicken and friendly garden, which I do share in the book. And for me, that was important because knowing how much the girls love to help us around the yard, I wanted them to have a whole area designated for them with edible flowers, edible vegetables, and also their own herbs. Um, because I think that definitely, I won't, I won't find anybody who wants to eat their vegetables in this house. <laughs> um, how do you keep the chickens from decimating the garden? in the sense are they pretty I mean when you plant a chicken friendly garden then what happens well we have our own vegetable garden that we have kept um, off limits to the girls once in a while when we are done with it at the end of the season I will let them in to kind of tidy up in their own chicken manners yeah. um, and also in the spring I'll let them in there to help till the earth get things moving um, and I don't mind what are you doing who's, who's making all this yeah, I know. Isn't it exciting? Come here. Come here. Oh, this is, I gotta show you. This is one of my um, older silkies. This is feathers. <laughs> what do you got? You got stuff on your hair? Yeah. She's a sweetie pie. Um, but um, so getting back to their garden, um, you know, I sometimes will let them just go crazy on a certain plant, uh, depending on the season. Some of the plantings, like celery, um, will regrow and regenerate, as well as the lettuces and a lot of the herbs. Other plants that seem to get too much of a beating, so to speak, from the chickens, um, I will make some chicken wire cloches to put over them, little cages to protect them. But certainly, I will never let my chickens run around the yard unsupervised because left to their own devices, they certainly have minds of their own and certainly can be a, you know, a gang of destruction. So you yeah. have to be careful. Um, but once you follow them around, it also is a great reason to get yourself outside, the kids go outside, and I give them smaller rakes so that they can tidy up um, from the chickens and things like that. So it works out. Uh, I don't know if you are, are a fan, too, of Lauren Scheuer, who did in my, uh, Once Upon a Flock, and she does the scratch. And yes. Pass. And I Isn't asked her. I know. I said, how did you get involved in chicken? She goes, because my family wouldn't come outside and play with me anymore. Oh. So, so that's sort of like right now, because of the chickens, your family is all outside. You're getting the fresh air. You're enjoying family. Yes. Yeah. Oh, here we go again. Listen to this. That's feathers. She has to lay an egg. It's egg laying time. So, well, I'm glad that you're able to join us during egg laying time. In the back, you see one of my chicken boys, Riley. He's the same oh. color as my uh, red Freedom Rangers. So, yes. oftentimes he gets locked in the pen because I, you know, he matches, and they pick on him. I mean, I, I that would be dead if I didn't see him. They really go after him, and he deserves it. Oh yeah, there you go. I'm so glad that we had this chance to connect. Technology uh, got in the way, but it was meant to be. And oh, thank you so much, and I appreciate it so much. You know, if I had brought the laptop out here instead of the iPhone, I'm sure there would have been a manifesto typed on it from my flock telling us uh, all of the demands about spring. <laughs> They're waiting for it, too. I know. They're so beautiful, and it's been fun getting to know them and yeah. getting to hear their egg songs, and I bet they're going to be so happy when you move out of the way and they can get to the nesting box. <laughs> I think they're wondering why I'm here. Maybe they think I'm becoming a chicken like them. <laughs> oh, that could be. A, and your other one who wanted to be on TV, I think she's waiting for me. Oh, yeah, here, here she comes again. She's, she's just underneath you out of camera reach but but she's uh you know they're they are determined when they want to be which is a great lesson for kids to perseverance <laughs> exactly and you know the other lesson i learned the other day from them is i clean their coop and then they start scratching and yes. so often as humans we go right along the surface but chickens teach us to scratch and see what's below because sometimes when you scratch below yes. the surface you find the treasures 
Absolutely. Polishing off that diamond in the rough, right? <laughs> That's true. So, everybody, I cannot recommend this book enough. I've gushed enough, so it's time for me to just go on and have a cup of coffee. But A Kid's Guide to Keeping Chickens. If you have a kid, know a kid. If there's a kid on your block, get this book. Thank you, Melissa. Go back and enjoy your hands. And oh, you're so welcome. Yeah, bye-bye. Thank you so much for having Bye-bye. Yeah. Have a clucky good day. Bye-bye. <laughs> you too. Bye-bye.